farmers, welcome back to No Man's Land, kind of struggling in the land, Dini, running the uh, the mulcher and the plow at the same time going uphill in our vineyard. You can see we just keep stopping once in a while. Uh, I think it's because the automatic gears are trying to figure out what gear to be in, that's why we keep stopping and going. But overall, the process has started. I should mention that Frank has finished picking up stones in our wheat field and those stones are being processed to lime. So I can finish liming that field a little bit later on. May not be this episode, but I'll get that done probably off camera. So last week's episodes, uh, I did I, I did bulk recording on those episodes, and I'm getting a lot of answers back. On uh, well, we had a few issues last week. It seemed like. Uh, let's get right to the first one that came up, I believe, which was cutting the grass with the forage harvester and the mower. And a couple of you have said. Yeah, that seems to be a thing. When you're cutting grass with a forage harvester, the yield seems to drop. Um, no one gave a reason why they, you know, why is that a thing? We don't know. Uh, but it is a thing. So I'm probably, every time I cut the grass down, I'm just going to go ahead and do it with the mower set that we have because we lost quite a bit of a yield off that field cutting that grass. And I don't want that to happen again. So I don't know if I'll keep the mower for the forage harvester or not but uh yeah that that's one thing we found out and a couple of you have confirmed that is the thing losing yield with the forage harvester cutting grass even though it's kind of more convenient uh but losing that much yield not that great uh the second thing i remember having a problem with last week was with the follow me mod when i was harvesting the wheat field to where frank would just veer off right or left and apparently, from what you guys said, um, in Follow Me in 22, it is not wise to back up in the Combine Harvester like it was. In previous versions of Farming Simulator, like 19 and 17, you could do that and it wasn't a problem. But apparently in 22, backing up uh, kind of tricks full, uh, Follow Me, almost said Fool Me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, Follow Me cannot, for some reason, track anymore when a Combine backs up even a little bit. And the reason why I was doing that with the combine, backing up a little bit at the end of the, end of the rows, is so the straw swath doesn't get too tall and, and wide and bulky, and that way we can uh, pick up all the straw. So no backing up on Follow Me. Well, if Follow Me is following you, don't back up that much, and uh, you won't have the problem. Uh, so there is that. So yeah, here we are in the vineyard trying to take care of the grass in between the rows. Uh, we're subsoiling as well, so it won't need to be plowed. Uh, we're taking care of that. Uh, I did want to spread some manure on these vineyards. Um, the problem is I've been spending some cash, and now I don't have enough cash to buy the manure spreader to put fertilizer on the vines. Uh, even though Precision Farming says we are fine on fertilizer, I would like to give it a try just to see what happens. But I need 28,000, well, let's say 29,000, for the manure spreader and yeah we're a little bit short in that i had to fix the mccormick after we got done picking up the stones the mccormick was completely worn out and that cost me something like eight grand to repair that so that's where most of my money went uh and also i got everything else taken care of meaning well obviously i picked up the mulcher for the landini because we're using it i got the 9t ideal combine ready to rock and roll i got the header on down and we're going to be harvesting some sorghum here in a little while. Uh, depends on how long I want to go ahead and do this. I've been at this now for quite a while. And i got many more rows to go. But i got the whole month of August to get this done. So I can get maybe maybe this uh, first patch of vines done. And then uh, maybe next episode I'll continue on to the next one. Because we're going to be in this month for quite a while. Probably two more episodes. Maybe somewhere around there. So I'm hoping by mulching, last year we did not mulch around the vines, so this year we are. I don't know if the yield's going to go up or down. Uh, the one thing I'm going to do before I go ahead and harvest these grapes next month, I think it'll be next month they'll be ready. I need to go back and find the episode where I harvested the grapes last season, and I want to see what I was getting per row over there, uh, those original grapes. And then I'm going to compare it to what we get this year because I think I've taken a little bit better care of them, I think. Uh, we'll find out when harvest time comes. 
seeing how the Landini is struggling a little bit trying to you know run both of these at the same time I'm trying to figure out if these drills are not wide enough to get a full-size tractor down through here not the Deutz fire the Deutz fire has got the balloon tires on it so that's not gonna fit but I think maybe the Kubota could fit down through here that's a possibility I'm going to wait till I get to the top of the row. i got to remember, is this Landini 135 horse? Something like that. And the Kubota might be a 160? Yeah, the Landini just, just, just isn't quite uh, like running two permits going up and down the hills. But if I can get the Kubota to run these, that'd be great. Okay, so before I go on down, let's go into here... Uh, small tractors. The Landini is 112 horse, and the Kubota is 141. So that's you know 30 more horsepower. I may have to give it a shot later on to see if it would fit. It may fit, but it might be a tight squeeze. At least with the Landini, I got a little bit of wiggle room either way. As for, as for the mulcher going down the rows here, you can't really get it underneath the vines, but at least we're getting some of it out from the middle. And at least by doing the mulching and now I'm doing the subswelling, we can kind of see what rows I've been in. That's also helpful. Another road done here. Let's see, I'm trying to think what other issues we had last week that we were talking about. It's been actually about maybe six days since I've been on this map for me, so I kind of forgot what we were somewhat doing, but I remember those conversations from last week. But everything else seems to be going nicely here in no man's land other than yeah we are a little bit short of money but i spent a lot of money in this month alone we got the john deere 9r sitting over there we'll be getting the subsoiling later on we don't want no weeds growing in our fields this probably go a little bit faster if I went into manual shift mode on the trackers that's something I have not gotten into in Farming Simulator 22 yet so if I, if I put it in manual I can pretty much select the gear that I want and I'll just run there instead of keep trying to shift up and down I'm hoping for a good yield on the grapes this season. We made a decent amount of cereal last year, but not a whole lot. And the one thing I got to do also, when I go harvest the grapes, I got to get the honey over to the cereal production building. I have been taking care of that, but I've been destroying the pallets to the side. So I got a good number of pallets to go over there, pick up and bring on over, get production done. We should be making a good amount of money this fall because we're going to be having the diesel production, ethanol production, but I still have to buy the trailers to transport said materials. But I think we'll make a good amount of money from selling the fuel. But i got to remind myself when I do the diesel, keep a good amount of diesel, well, I mean a good amount, maybe 10,000 liters in the production building so I can fuel up my tractors for another year, free of charge. And I'm thinking about leaning towards just getting ourselves maybe a portable tanker to store the diesel in and go from tractor to tractor. Because right now we just got the pump over at the main farm, so anytime I need to fuel something up, I have to drive it over to the main farm. But if I get myself a trailer, 
I can uh, say like the Landini, for instance. You can kind of see the Landini's getting kind of low on fuel. I'm going to have to drive all the way back to the main farm to get fuel. Or I could go to the store and get it. I think getting ourselves a trailer might be the easiest way to go. You can buy empty tankers to put down on your farm and then fill them up. Okay, so another road done. I gotta go around and clear up these bushes that are near the fields. Still a lot of things we need to do here in no man's land. But little by little, we're getting there. But at least on the money situation, uh, like I said when we bought the 9R, I think I'm done buying tractors. I think we got enough tractors on the farm to do what we need to do. Uh, as for harvesters, I don't see myself buying any anytime soon, although. I do have a mod that we could end up using in the future, but nothing I'm going to need for currently. Um, I found a mod for root, root crop harvesting, but it also does sugarcane and cotton, and they got wide headers on them as well. Very wide. I think, is it 18 meters? Something like that. And we can harvest them really, really fast. But I don't care about harvesting fast, but at least having a wider header on root crop harvesting would be nice. Oh, yeah, and the other thing we need to get to, and I don't know if we'll get to it today, is there was an update to the greenhouses that we're using here. We can now grow corn, soybean, cotton. And there was another one that they added, but I can't remember off the top of my head. So on the greenhouses, if you got the same mod I do, uh, yeah, if you update it, we can grow corn, cotton, soybean, and I really wish I can remember what the other one is, but we can check it in the production building here in a little while. Plus, you can put down a station, apparently, next to the greenhouses, so instead of going to every greenhouse and topping off with the material that it needs, uh, you can go into, it's kind of like a small production building, to where you can put uh, seed, manure, and you know, distribute to each greenhouse. The only problem I would have a little bit, I think, is on the greenhouses, I use manure for the greenhouses. And if it distributes like every other production building, the manure may actually be put into the BGA. Kind of like the same problem I have with the cut sugar beet. I put the cut sugar beet into the processor at the BGA, and the BGA will take some of the cut sugar beet, but some of the cut sugar beet also goes to the sugar mill. I think it'd just be a great feature, and we talked about it before on the production buildings, where it says uh, incoming production, you can either activate or deactivate those, so it doesn't take from other buildings. If we can manage the output on the buildings, why not be able to manage the inputs? All right, so this wasn't too bad getting this done here. But of course, if I want to expand the vineyard, which I talked about when I placed these down in the springtime, it's going to take a while longer. Now, I haven't looked into it, but I do see uh, there are instructions on how to use course play on vineyards and groves. So eventually I might get course play to work on these. But since this is kind of a a new thing in Farming Simulator 22, even though it's been out now for more than a half a year. This is the first time I've really gotten into the vineyard itself, even though we harvested some grapes last season. Yeah, the Landini just doesn't like going uphill too much with the mulcher in the front and the subsoiler in the back. So if I don't get enough money by the end of the month, I'm definitely going to sell some products so we can get the manure spreader. And we'll come over here and spread the manure down, although I don't think it's going to take too much. Alright, 
few more passes and we're done here for now anyways. And then we'll go harvest some sorghum. The sorghum is for the horses mainly. And today for harvesting we're going to be using our old Ideal 9T Combine. I don't want to say it's old, but uh, actually I was going to, first I was going to say it's our original Combine, but it's not. Because <laughs> we had the 770 New Holland Combine for a while. Well, one of the vineyards is done, so that's good enough to start the morning off here in August. Just park this right here. I may have to go top this off with fuel to finish up. Uh, the rest of the vines, but I may do that off camera or do it some next episode. Don't know. Uh, but we are somewhat good here. Uh, says they're growing. Yep, we can see the grapes on the bottom of the vines. And uh, yeah, we'll try spreading some manure on here later on. But you can see nitrogen says it's perfect. It's actually over, over nitrogenized. It's got too much nitrogen here. Uh, 45 out of zero. It says it needs zero nitrogen, which just seems kind of kind of odd. Uh, but I've been told, yeah, the pH and nitrogen on precision farming for olive groves and vineyards doesn't really matter, um, apparently. Uh, but we're all in the green, so it looks all good anyways. Anywho, let's zip on down here. We are ready to go. Let's see. Yep, our ideal 9T. Is all set to go. This is a 45 foot header that we purchased. And the reason why we got the 45 foot uh, header is because the land over here is a little uneven. And I think our 60 foot header would miss some of the crop. Plus, it's good to be using the 9T once again. And I thought today would be the day I would be using both combines at the same time. But since the other fields I want to harvest are straw related, I think I'll just wait until we're harvesting and uh, Frank is falling behind us with a baler. We got plenty of time to get everything harvested anyways. Another thing I need to remind myself I need to do is I'm going to bring some slurry on over to our seed production building because it ran out of slurry, so we're not producing any more seed currently. And I stopped there for a second because I didn't see any sorghum coming out of our pipe. I was like, what's going on there? I think it's all good. This should be enough feed for our horses for quite a while. The only thing I'm wondering is, do I have enough room in the silo for everything? I may have to bring a load of wheat down to milling it over and make some more flour. Oh, that reminds me, I know where I can get some money. Our sugar plant is full. So I can go ahead and sell some sugar and we get a whole bunch of cash that way. And yeah, that'll give us enough money to buy the newer spreader for the vineyard. It looks like our sorghum is harvesting rather well, but the field is in really, really good condition. Not the best condition it can be in. This is a field I did not go around with the crop sensors and put fertilizer on it in our last growth stage. another crop like cotton that when you harvest it it leaves the stalks there but even though we got crop destruction on you think it would destroy the stalks of the sorghum but it doesn't that's all right because the 9r will be in here later on in the day and subsoiling this all in anyways And it all depends on how this harvest goes to see what I want to plant in this field next season. I don't know what's best for the horses. I think oats are the best for the horses. 
if I can't remember on this mod if it takes oats or not. But we need oats for pig food, we need oats for cereal. I remember going with sorghum just because I wanted a whole bunch of different crops in the fields this year. So we have different things to harvest. Plus, when sorghum is ready for harvest, it just adds another color to the map. Well, I don't think I'm going to make it all the way around to where the truck is. So I may bring the truck over here and unload at this corner. Yeah, that'll work. I can get the truck in there with the trailer. I'll just say, where's the horses? There's Ollie. I don't, oh, there's Annabelle. Yeah, I don't think I would have made it this far around to where the truck is. We do have plenty of corn to harvest, but we need corn for many things. Uh, we're doing one corn field to make silage with. Uh, another corn field is for making, uh, I believe, pig food. Then, of course, the rest of the corn we made for making ethanol fuel. Corn galore everywhere. Actually, I forgot how many liters this combine holds. Is it 16,000? Forgot now. We can find out here when I sit in this truck and we'll find out what it gets. Roughly. Because it wasn't a full load. Actually, I'll turn the Mac Anthem off. Don't want to be wasting diesel fuel. Alright, so maybe it's 18,000 liters. I don't remember because we just put 16,000 in. Which is good. Alright, let's beat feet around this field. Let's get this field harvested. So we can get some other work done. I promise I really tried To keep you away from my mind And I tell you this ain't no lie But I done my best to find Well, believe it or not, if you can remember the problem we were kind of having with the 9T before, 
with the other harvesters that we had on there, the headers. Uh, still having a little bit of an issue, even with the 45 foot header going uphill. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Uh, it's not like it's clipping the ground or anything like that, I don't think. But it did slow me down quite a bit going up that little slope right ahead of us there. Maybe the header was clipping the ground a little bit, but... Anyways, we're just about done here. And then I just have to figure out, is this going to all fit into our silo? And if it doesn't, um, well, we'll figure something out <laughs> after that. Because the thing is, if it doesn't all fit, that means I'll have sorghum actually in the trailer. So it's not like I can take wheat out in the trailer and bring it on down. If I have to, I got the other smaller trailer there that holds about 12,000 liters. And maybe I can do some stuff with that. Because so I would like to keep all the sorghum if I can. It's not that big of a deal because I think we only got two horses right now. So they got plenty of feed for quite a while. Maybe this would be easier if I do fill up the silo, bring the rest of the sorghum on down and bake flour with it. That is our first harvest in this field. Actually, I'm wondering if I can fit all the sorghum I did harvest into the trailer. Let's see if I park this like right here, that'd be good. Uh, be easier if I just teleport on over to here. We are 77% full. And that leaves for this month to harvest the oats that we do have. And I'll have to double check on some of the stuff like our cereal production building, see how many oats we got left in there. Uh, but the, our new pig food production needs to have some oats put in there. that all going to fit into the trailer and I'm thinking it's going to be a little bit shy of getting it all in there. Another 6,000 liters but yep almost not quite. Having more is always good, though. Let's go see if I can shove this all into the silo. I, I think we got like a hundred, hundred is it 150,000 liters in the silo of wheat. We took everything else out, so I can probably get most of this trailer in there. And yeah, I can always add an extension. Is that going to hit the silo in the back? Uh, yep, yeah, okay, almost all of it. So, I got, I'm going to have about 5,000 liters of sorghum left over. So I can take a long trip on down and dump that in, or... You know what, I'll probably take the McCormick that's sitting there, take some wheat out, and top off the chickens with feed, and I'll probably give me enough room to put the rest of the sorghum in there. Turn that off there. Okay. 
and voila. Oh, that's right, you gotta fold the pipe up first. And then fold up the harvester. And now what I need to do is grab the 9R. And just like that, start subsoiling that field so we can prep it on up. But the one thing we don't have to do other than take care of this wheat field is spread some lime. We did all the fields last year except for the wheat field. So they're good for about another two more harvests. Three harvests in total I think is what's kind of good for lime. And just like that, sorghum field is uh, pretty much gone. It's all gone in a matter of moments. Yeah, when I bought the 9R and I used it last episode, I was talking about articulated uh, tractors and trailers. And yeah, apparently I'm not the only one that feels that way about them. I don't mind the tractors too much. It just takes a little, just takes a little bit getting used to again. Um, but overall, the tractors I don't mind that much. It's just that when you hop from one tractor to another, it just takes me a moment or two to get used to how much you want to steer it. Especially when you back up. But, uh, yeah, so we got about, what, 60... Probably about 60,000 liters of sorghum off this field. Yeah, I'll probably plant sorghum again anyways. Just because it's a different crop uh, than oats and wheat. We don't really do barley either anymore. But that's something I could uh, start planting again. I am kind of curious though when I subsoil the ground over here. When I made this field, there wasn't hardly any stones on this section of the field, which was kind of weird. And right now you can kind of see I'm not getting any stones whatsoever again. Okay, there's a, there's a little patch there. But most of this section over here had no stones in it, which was kind of weird. Compared to other spots that we plow. But the horses should be happy for a long time with the amount of sorghum that we got. Uh, but mostly I think it's hay that they prefer. And this tree is going to have to go bye-bye at some point. Overall, like I said early on, things are looking pretty good here. Uh, we're a little bit short in cash, but I think what I'm going to do is grab some sugar because we got too much sugar. And we'll sell that, get some cash. Uh, we got to take care of the vineyard next episode still. <laughs> got to mulch and subsoil that, but we're going to try to put some manure down. I don't think it's going to take hardly any, but we'll, we'll, we'll give it a try. See how it goes. That trailer is only like... 28, 29 grand. And then we got to start saving up for a couple of tankers because when we make our ethanol and diesel, as soon as we can get some of that uh, fuel and sell it, bring, bring in a good amount of money in, we'll do that. I would like to be able to buy a tree harvester before winter comes so I can do a whole bunch of tree harvesting. But um, even with the three sawmills we got, they're not going through those logs hardly at all. And we still got a whole bunch in storage. So I may try doing something else with the logs. I don't know. I don't know if I want to put down a fourth sawmill, but I guess I could. We got the room for it, but stuff to think about. But we got plenty of work to do in the fields before I get to thinking about putting down more production buildings or anything like that. Um, also, I do know that there is a meat production building out there as well. I don't know if I'm going to put that down or not. Um, we'll have to see. Um, I just want to make sure I'm using the correct mod author that created that mod. Because uh, I've seen it on a couple of third-party websites. So I just want to make sure about that before I go ahead and do that. But I think for the meat production, I may have to make my own pallets for it. 
Uh, at least that's the one I saw anyways. You have to make, you know, you got to... Pallets were one of the things you got to input uh, to get the meat made. But um, I was kind of just thinking of selling the pigs outright. Uh, we're, we're not selling the cows. We got dairy cows, so don't want to be selling the cows for meat. But plenty of things we can still do here, but we got plenty of work, like I just said, to get the fields done and uh, get set for next season. Plenty of work to do. And uh, we're going to get to that again next episode because that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching. As always, I'll catch you again right here in no man's land. But until then, have a good one.